So uh, in lab three, we're going to uh, improve our set image we uh, created last time. So if you haven't done so, please log into our AWS virtual computer. Okay, and the, the image show on my screen is from our uh, last lab, and it shows the lab set image of San Francisco Bay. I mean, as we uh, said before, it is beautiful, but it could be better. So as you can tell, the whole image shows uh, some kind of a bluish tint. That is because there is an atmosphere between our satellite sensor and our land surface. And atmosphere actually uh, scatters part of the the lights, especially the blue lights. So that's why we see here, uh, we see some uh, bluish uh, color shift. So today we're go going to learn a very basic, uh, almost empirical algorithm, how to remove that bluish or tint, or actually the to reduce, at least to reduce some of the atmospheric scattering effect. So uh, let me close this. and change out, and let us change to lab 3. Okay. Now, well, let's uh, take a look of our TMP scratch space. So you should find all the data from last time. If you, for some reason, uh, because it's the scratch space is just temporary, uh, saving storage. So it, uh, if you uh, the 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 files disappeared from last time, you should be able to just run stage data again and to re copy or restage data to data there. It's not a big deal. Okay. Now, so we're going to use example two to do some basic atmospheric correction. And let's take a look. By the way, uh, DOS uh, means uh, dark object subtraction. It's not uh, Microsoft DOS. Okay, so uh, this script is almost exactly the same as uh, what we have in lab two. The only difference is here. Now, instead of specify zero, we actually specify five one. So we turn on the flag to say, hey, we want to actually uh, use atmospheric correction in Lancer ETM.py. So let's run the script and take a look and see how, what it does. There we go. And what we see here is, well, let me do this. Okay, so we create another cell image. And it's different from last time because the, well, kind of the, we attach the name, change to DOS, dark object subtraction. And let's take a look how different they are. Again, it's uh, kind of big, so just be a little bit patient. There we go. It will compound. So, now, as we can tell, well, let me actually zoom to the whole screen. There. Now, as we can we can see very clearly, the bluish tint is gone for our new file, and overall, the ocean become a little bit darker as compared before, and some of the uh, forest uh, looks a little bit darker, but the uh, the land overall 
looks like a lot, a lot more like we、uh, would expect to see a clear day. You look at the land surface, and so our、uh, dark object subtraction algorithm does make some difference. And so let's go back and take a look and see what exactly we mean by dark object subtraction. And well, we're gonna look into the code. So、uh, just be patient; it's not that difficult. Okay,、uh, open Lancer ETM. I'm gonna turn on the the line numbers. And dark object. Oh, oops. Okay, here. Anyway, in as we actually described in the last、uh, lab, the, all the magic of the Lancer ETM is actually happening within this function called Lancer ETM. And right after we do, you know, reading for each band, reading the TIF file and. Convert the, the digital number to radians. We actually have option to do、uh, atmospheric correction using the DOS algorithm. Now, what we're going to do is call function called search dark object. Let's go take a look. So again, it's very simple algorithm, very simple equation, just a few lines. Basically, it does is it reading the the band data and you know get rid of those、uh, a few values you know it's outside our boundary and then do a histogram based on the、uh, surface reflectance of each pixels of every pixels. Let me see. And now, so.、Um, We're gonna take once we have the histogram, we're gonna take the、uh, the darkest、uh, pixels. Let's see.、Uh, we use the by default use the threshold about one percent. So we use choose let's see the one percent darkest、uh, pixels, and use that reflectance as we see. Hey, this these、uh, pixels are supposed to be look like. Really dark, very dark. So let's go back. Okay. So once we have the, you know, if a dark object does not look dark, that means atmosphere scattering. So once we have the atmosphere scattering, we、uh, can subtract that number from all the pixels. In our algorithm, actually, we.、Uh, Multiply some empirical fractions, and just make sure, yeah, you know, we we don't have to、uh, make those、uh, objects or the pixels totally black. We just want them to look really dark. So anyway, so we're gonna try subtract those reflectance or not reflectance at this moment. It's actually the radiance, and from what we get from the、uh, the the raw. The original radians we calculate, and after that we do the same thing to、um, calculate、uh, surface reflectance and save the data. So it's pretty much the same, very simple, and but we have seen the effect. Now, atmospheric correction is a big theme in satellite data processing. Because for science, we want our observations to be consistent over time and also over space,、uh, because the atmosphere can change day by day, you know,、uh, from you know, place、uh, to another place. So that's why we wanted to、uh, remove the atmosphere、uh, effect on our surface radiance or reflectance or whatever、uh, variable you're looking at. Now, the、uh, dark up 
dark object subtraction is a very, very basic uh, algorithm. And it's almost empirical. So I want you to look at some actually uh, literature on this topic. If you're interested, just be uh, beware. They're actually um, very rich literature on the topic. So um, let's go to uh, the website show on my screen you and see all right uh, there we go so uh, Dr. Song has this paper back in 2001 there we go so did he actually did a very good job describe how in when to use uh, different atmospheric uh, correction algorithm to Landsat data. You use a TM data, but it's the same thing. And I encourage you to spend some time read this paper because it's very clear written and very uh, good the concept, very clear. And on his web page, there are actually some. Uh, there's actually a lab called Correct uh, Correcting Atmosphere Effect on Remote Sensing Images. So in line uh, with our virtual lab. Now there are some other way, more physical based way to do atmospheric correction. Now. We have another example under the lab three directory, which we unfortunately we don't have time to go into it. So um, the basic idea is uh, there are some other variables. It's less, uh, I would say, the less sensitive to the influence of atmosphere, such as what we have here, uh, NDVI, which is uh, normalized difference vegetation indices. So the concept of NDVI will be introduced later on in our uh, NDX uh, virtual labs. Now, if you go to scripts, we have actually more scripts to uh, process other Landsat sensors. For instance, we have Landsat TM, which is Landsat 5, and Landsat OLI, which is Landsat 8, which is the latest Landsat. And we also have Landsat uh, MSS, which is the oldest one. So uh, when we stage our data, we actually staged, for each of those sensors, we stage the data. So uh, the, the point is, if you're interested, I encourage you to do a similar practice and process all these Landsat sensors. So hopefully you learned something from this uh, tutorial and will keep going with our uh, virtual labs and joining our open challenge. Good luck.